sometimes I joke that I blame Gandhi and Mother Teresa for this. That they sort of set up this like, that if you're going to do good for society, it's like, you know, you need to live a life of immense self-sacrifice, austerity. And I just don't think that that's the case. Change can happen overnight. Change takes time. It's like a, you know, long-term transformative process. The problems are too complex to solve. Diminished social status. The sector is highly corrupt. Low pay. I can't really build a career here. Self-sacrifice. If you believe these narratives, they become true for you. We're really looking at how can you also have socially conscious business that are for profit. So as long as you're keeping the social lens in focus, but still trying to run a profitable business, why not? We try to increase farmers' income by three times. When we increase it by three times, we are value unlocking money for very poor and marginal farmers. And when you unlock, they're willing to share a certain percentage with you. And when you do this in large scale, you will be able to not only add value, but also get value out of that. I think it's never been a better time to go work in social impact as a professional career as there is today. We've got millennial entrepreneurs who just by definition or by default are starting organizations that are driven by purpose as much as by profit. So a lot has changed in the last, uh, I would say, five to ten years uh, because of acts like the CSR bill. So social sector organizations have the funds now to pay. There's a lot of research now that shows that purpose-driven businesses perform better than non-purpose-driven businesses. You know, I have enough, but am I doing enough? So I think th those are some burning questions which have um, always been there with me. So the sector is very large. It is the la third largest employer in the country. I think this generation cares a lot about meaning. I mean, especially the younger lot I interact with. It should be seen as aspirational. Oh, can I hack it in the social sector? As opposed to, ah, yeah, you know, like I I'll go do that, like at time pass, you know? current CEO of Dream a Dream started off in 2007 as a volunteer. They will look at the values, they will look at the culture, they will look at the work-life balance. These are things which are becoming important. People question their learning growth. Social sector, particularly the impact sector, provides all these things. So it's not like every social sector organization gets you the opportunity of working on the ground. There are funding organizations which are social sector organizations. There are consulting organizations that are social sector organizations. The skills you need in a sector is tolerance towards ambiguities. A visionary who can think long term might not be thinking about one year but the next ten years. You make choices as business decisions only based on profitability without looking at the choices impacting the rest of the planet and how they're impacting the people. You've not had a full education. I've given up my career as a corporate finance lawyer um, and I, I'm doing this. I love it. I'm just so happy. In some sense, just the delight of what young people are able to do and being surprised constantly by what potential exists. The rewards have been fantastic. I mean, uh, not just in terms of seeing people's potential, but also my own growth. And in addition, we've been able to put a billion dollars in the hands of people. And that's an enormous sort of satisfaction to have. So all religious traditions have it. All the psychological literature talks about it. So it's just very, very clear that the best way in which you can lead a happy and fulfilled life is if you do your bit to help other people who are less privileged than you. It definitely makes you a better person, which is why I want to make it mandatory for everybody to do this. Time is now, I think we're living in an unprecedented time. You can see uh, around you, like everything is changing and everything is changing fast. Why do people, you know, accumulate houses? Because they want to leave behind an inheritance. But you could leave behind an inheritance that, you know, transcends all of that. You could build institutions, you could build up, you know, generations of people who sort of look and say, you know what, this person was a change maker and I'm changed because of him or her. People were surprised when I let go of my Flipkart CXO job to do this. And I'm like, hey, I've made more money than I'll ever need in life. And if that's not enough, if I can't do it, then I don't know who can. The fact that I have the power to change, and the change is not about me.